Proverbs chapter 11. And it seems like some Proverbs we're just going to have to break into two. There's, there's so much in each of these verses to study. A false ba uh, balance, Proverbs 11. 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. God wants an honest business. He wants the weights and measures to be proper. If you go to the gas station and you pay for five gallons of gas, God wants you to get five gallons. Not 4.99 and not 5.1. He doesn't want you to shortchange and he doesn't want you to be over. He doesn't want you to be stolen from and he doesn't want you to be stealing from a company. And notice it says an abomination. Now in the grocery store business it's called tears. And when you get a salad and the salad is weighed, that scale is supposed to take off the container. You're not supposed to pay for the container. You're supposed to pay for the product. But a false balance, a lying balance, cheating and stealing is an abomination. You know why that word abomination is interesting? You know, and we rightfully do, should, you know, sodomy is an abomination. The gay community is an abomination. Lesbian is an abomination. So is having a false balance. The same word abomination goes to proper weight. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord God. But, this is the A and the A and the A and the A. A just weight is his God's delight. Talking about theft and stealing. Both for the consumer and for the business. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Pride never brings anything good out of your life. Never. Pride is a sin and pride is something that God never has. As much as God cannot, will not, is unable to lie, God is unable to be proud. Or show pride. He never says, I'm proud of you. He says, well done. Oh, Jesus Christ, I am very proud of Jesus. No, well, he's my beloved son. But with the lowly, opposite of pride, lowly is wisdom. Opposite of shame for the pride is wisdom. God won't give wisdom to a prideful man. He'll give him shame. America better pay attention. England had great pride. The, the sun never set upon the English Empire. Absolutely correct. The English Empire sent out the King James 1611 Bible. The English Empire had missionaries going all over the world. They got lofty. If it wasn't for America stepping in, Germany would have kicked their butt in World War II. If it wasn't for Germany cursing the Jew and God giving the curse upon Germany for the Jews. The integrity. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. But perverseness so what's opposite of upright perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. So are you a Christian and involved in perverseness? You need to confess your sin. You can't be upright and be in perverse. And when you're perverse, it will destroy you. 
But when you're upright, it'll guide you. These are the yea and nays of the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and chapter 10. And we are to weigh ourselves according to the Bible. And the, one of the best spots to weigh ourselves, whether we're right or whether we're wrong, is each verse, almost, almost each verse, in the book of Proverbs as we're studying. Are you upright? Or are you perverse? What's the scripture say? Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. What is opposite of riches? An interesting word, righteousness. And what Solomon, the Holy Spirit, is telling us in the day of wrath, he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. When it comes to the great white throne judgment, and your name is not in that book, no matter how rich you were, it ain't going to uh, absolve, it ain't going to please God of his wrath. Any testament. No matter how much fame you had on this earth. And a man today in the church age dies without Jesus Christ. I don't care how popular it were. It won't get you by the wrath of God. And the wrath of God will be the lake of fire that burns forever. But righteousness delivereth from death. The Bible says sleep. As far as a Christian, it's called sleep. It's called, I'm not ever going to die. Well, if the Lord tarries, you're going to be, yeah, my body will be put in a grave. It'll be sleeping, but I'll be absent with the body and present with the Lord. All they that are asleep in Christ shall come at the rapture shall be first. Your body ain't dead. It's sleeping waiting for the resurrection the glorious day of the rapture you find sleep for the christian in acts chapter 7 first thessalonians chapter 4 and even john chapter 11 talking about lazarus who was in the grave jesus said he sleepeth and the disciples thought well you know if he's sick and not feeling well you know sleeping is good for you and he said lazarus is dead the righteousness of the perfect. Now for the Old Testament, that's keeping the law. Which a Christian can't do. Shall direct his way. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Notice righteousness and the opposite of righteousness, the wicked. The righteous shall be directed in his way. And yet the wicked shall fall in his wickedness. Now what is a perfect for the Christian? Well first it has to be the way, the truth, and the life. By your faith, belief alone in Jesus Christ to save your soul. Confessing your sin. Preaching the gospel. Reading and studying the Bible. Prayer. Trying to be unspotted with the world. Perfect doesn't mean absolutely, you know, absolutely wonder is you're doing to the best of your ability. And you're still striving even though you fail. My way, it says his way. My way today is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. And God is for the guide. This is the way I want you to go when you walk right in God either testament moses had uh, noah had no law but god guided him i mean we don't know what noah was before he became a shipbuilder but god guided him on, on the ark and preparation and the preaching and the animals and what needed to be gathered that he lived right and lived perfect and obeyed god and the way of his family were saved without the law
The righteous of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Righteousness, the opposing is transgressor. Now my righteousness and up my uprightness in the church age is all upon Jesus Christ. In the law, their righteousness was what they did according to the law. Listen, when that rich young ruler came up to Jesus and Jesus said, Thou shalt commit no adultery, it shall honor thy mother and father, thou shalt not steal. And he gave him a list of commandments. And that man said, all these I have kept from my youth up. And Jesus did not argue with him. Though he violated coveting. Job, when you read the account of Job, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I didn't do this, I did that, I did that, I didn't do this, I did that, before the law. And there was no rebuke. Don't you dare as a Christian, well, you know, look at me, look what I do, look at look at my church attendance, look at you know the people I witness to, look at all the people got saved by me, look at the gospel church, look at look at look at look at look at look, look, look at how great I am. And you're a fool. You know what's gonna deliver me today? The blood of Jesus Christ, the merit of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus. When I come, it's not gonna be like the Catholic. You know, Peter at the gate. But if it were to be Peter at the gate, and it's not, why should I let you into heaven? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh. You know, the Bible says in Revelation 20, and there will be people of the law, and there will be people before the law, and there'll be people in the in the tribulation period in the millennium. Their name is going to be in that book, and they're going to go to glory. Not everybody at that judgment is going to go into the lake of fire. The Bible says, if their name, look at it, Revelation chapter twenty. Before I go further, look at the scripture. There are going to be people saved at the great white throne judgment. Revelation twenty. Don't ever believe that once you're at the great white throne judgment, you're damned. Whosoever, verse 15, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Well, what if your name was found in the book, land's book of life? Now, what will judge that person to find his name in the book of life? Let's look at verse 12, same chapter, Revelation 20. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. Another book opened, which is the book of life. Notice how it doesn't say the land's book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their... There's works that save you. There's the works that save you. Out of the Old Testament, the law, the tribulation period that's coming, faith and belief and the law. I mean, do you think? Let's pick. Let's pick one person out of the law, and there are many, but I'll give one. I'll give one person, Samuel. All right, I'll give you another, Elijah. What about Samson? He's in he's in Hebrew in Hebrews the faith chapter. Do you think they're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ? Absolutely not. So where are they going to be if they're not at the judgment seat of Christ? That's for Christians. We're going to be at the great white throne judgment. They're going to go to hell, the lake of fire. No. Their name will be in the book of life, and they will go into glory. Why are they going to glory? Because the righteousness of the perfect shall direct their way. They've done what the law told them to do. Noah will be in the book of life. Why? God told him to build an ark. 
What did Noah do? What work did Noah do? He built the ark, he brought the animals, and he got the food, and got in the ark, and God closed the door. That's the salvation of Noah. Now, anybody who built that ark in Tennessee, if they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, anybody who is involved in that work did not put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone will not be written in the book of life, no matter they built the ark or not built the ark, and they'll be cast off in the lake of fire because that the ark building wasn't for today. Abraham, what was Abraham's salvation? He'd done what God told him to do. What is our righteousness today? Faith and belief in the merit of Jesus Christ alone. Listen, I only witness, I only do what, what God tells me to do because of Jesus. I don't do it for my own profit. I don't do it for my own welfare. Because there are plenty of Christians out there who don't do nothing and are saved. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. You realize a wicked man, the more he lives, the more wicked he is. And the more of a greater fall into the lake of fire. You know what's damning about religion? And let me tell you about the Catholic religion, because I grew up as a Catholic, Roman Catholic. Do you know, when I went into that closet and I confessed my sins before that priest, I was sinning. Because the Bible says I'm supposed to confess my sins to Jesus, not to man. So I, you know, if I went in there and said to that priest, I did this, I did that. All right, those sins have not been resolved. Those sins have not been paid. Added to the sin, I went to another sinner trying to resolve my sin. I added to it. And then when I walked out of the confession booth, I'm surrounded by idolatry. I add another sin. The wicked of the wicked are adding sin to sin to sin, and there's only one sin that can that there's only one way to cleanse you of your sin. It's the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. How you doing, Christian? Are you righteous or are you wicked? You can be a wicked sinner. If you're not reading your Bible, you're not witnessing, you're, you're not praying, you're not doing what God has told you to do and confessing. You're adding wickedness to wickedness to wickedness to wickedness. Even though you're saved, you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to get wood, hay, and stubble. You can be wicked and be a, be a saved Christian. Where do you stand? The righteous righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. All right, we just saw... The righteousness of the perfect will direct his ways. The righteousness of the upright. Upright's perfect. Verse 5, 5 and 6. Perfect is upright. Shall deliver them. Deliver is the same way the directing of the ways of verse 5. But the transgressors, opposite of what wickedness, I mean righteousness, transgressors, we saw transgressors in verse 3, opposite of upright, verse 3. See, Scripture was, that's why people don't read the Bible. I don't read the Old Testament. Because the Bible says, this is your sin. I don't want to read that. Why? Because I'm guilty. Why do you not think they want the Ten Commandments in the courtroom? I wonder why. Would hate to have to go into the courtroom, sit in the courtroom, wait for the judge to call your name, and you've been charged with larceny. And above the wall says, thou shalt not steal. Oh, uh, wonder what. I, I'd be, hate to be standing on, on the stand, and I'm perjuring myself, and I look on the wall and see, thou shalt not bear false witness. I would hate to have to be on the stand of a courtroom and be charged against crimes against my parents when the when I look on the wall and says, Honor thy mother and father. 
I know it don't happen in a courtroom, actually some state, so they won't charge it. But there are countries, you'd be standing under witness saying you're being charged with adultery. It's a crime in some areas, still today. And you look at the thing, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Imagine a thief, understand, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's goods. Righteousness of the right, upright shall deliver them. But the transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Read about Haman, Ahab, and Naboth. Haman built gallows, and how did Haman die? He died by his own gallows. Ahab, wicked king, wicked wife, and it came back to haunt him. Naboth, read the study of those men. Um, Achan, now this is his name. Read about Achan. The righteousness of Jesus Christ, I will be delivered from death and hell. The righteousness of an Old Testament saint, by the blood, by doing the law, they went to Abraham's bosom, they didn't go to hell. And then evidently, when Christ died on the cross and Christ was buried and Christ arose from the grave, they came out of the grave. But they did not go to hell. They went to Abraham's bosom. Because they'd done what God told them to do. And don't ask me what they did before Abraham's bosom. I don't know. I just thought about that. Uh, if I remember, I think my pastor is going to get a good question on Sunday morning. Where did they go before Abraham? The transgressors of, uh, shall be taken of their own naughtiness. Did you read there in Revelation 20? And the books were open? Did you not read in Matthew where Jesus said, Every idle word man shall give an account? Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. Do you realize that Joab's brother was charged with murder, though Joab did it? But his brother was thinking about it also. You know the very thoughts, never mind the actions, the very thoughts of every wicked man, the great white throne judgment is going to hang himself. The thought, never mind the act. I'm, right, you got, let's say somebody killed, let's say somebody went and killed somebody, whatever, however they killed them. God will judge that man not only for the murder, but he'll judge him for every word he said in his life, every thought of all the people he wanted to kill, all the adulterous thoughts he's ever had, all the hatred he had in his... Listen, God told in the law to the Jew, thou shalt not hate thy, bro thy neighbor in your heart. You know, the judgment seat of Christ... And the great white throne judgment. There is much to be judged that has not even preached, even in good pulpits. I'm talking about good preachers. Cannot even get the grasp of all that we're all going to be judged for. When a wicked man dieth, oh, his expectation shall perish. And the hope of the unjust man perish. Now let's go back to what we read in chapter 10, verse 28. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. That's a verily, verily, it's repeated. Today in the church age, and I'm trying to put what I can to the church age. Today, 2020. Let's say you got a wicked man who has not believed on Jesus Christ. He's wicked. And he's got the greatest expectations for his wife and his children. Let's say for his wife, man, he wants to give her the best house, the best gowns, the, the best car, 
uh, the, the greatest maids for his children. He, he wants his children to go to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and any other great colleges I can't think of. He, he wants his family to be in Ferraris and, and Porsches. Uh, never mind Porsches. I used to be a tow truck driver, and I towed a lot of Porsches. Uh, Ferraris. Another tropical depression. I just got over. All right, he wants the best. He wants to be CEO. He wants to be the, the great golfer of his golf club team. And if he dies without Jesus Christ, all those expectations shall perish. Die with him. And he may be a good wicked man. But there is no good wicked man today in the church age when you have despised and rejected Jesus Christ. And the hope on the unjust man doesn't say he doesn't have hope. But the hope that the unjust man has, it also dies. I hope my team makes it to the grand, whatever big team that the team is play. I hope me and my children can go down to vacation land. I hope my wife and I can go on that cruise we want to go on. I hope I can get to that fishing, whatever that, that unjust man as standing before God, whatever hopes he had in his life, without the blessed hope today, I'm 220, in, in, in the church age, without the blessed hope as his faith and belief in his Savior, all the hope he has perished. A man without Jesus Christ is without hope and dead. The righteous is present tense delivered out of trouble and the wicked cometh in his stead his place now did it say to the righteous is delivered out of trouble or did it say the righteous will never have trouble will you tell those people with the prosperity gospel it says delivered out of trouble. It does not say the righteous, and I'm righteous through Jesus Christ. It does not say God will prevent me from trouble. It says when I do get in trouble, whether it be by God, by the devil, or myself, God will deliver me, not prevent me from the trouble. Don't you think Paul got in a lot of trouble in his life? Paul got in trouble when he's on the road to Damascus and Jesus is like, why persecute thou me, Paul? And by faith and belief in Jesus, that was all clear through the blood. Paul says, I sought the Lord three times for a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan buffeted me. Did God get rid of that messenger of uh, of Satan, did God get rid of that thorn in his flesh? God says, Nope. I can't quote the verse. I think he said, My grace is sufficient for thee. God delivered him, but he didn't prevent him. Paul, I gave you God, I gave you the devil. What about Paul? Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. I'm going to Jerusalem. Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. I'm going to Jerusalem. Paul's in Jerusalem. He got in trouble, didn't he? He ended up in. Did God say, "Okay, Paul, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beam you over to Rome"? Where no, he, he, Paul went to jail. Paul suffered. I, I forget how many years he lost. Don't you dare sit under a pastor, a preacher, or an idiot. And once you become saved, all your troubles will go away. Don't you ever. You get out of that church at that moment right now. Close your Bible. Get out and go find a Bible believing church. God delivered Job. And Job was righteous. You know what Job did? Just in case my sin, my son sin, I'm going to offer an Thackerite for him.
What have you done for your children? There are Christian parents out there that don't even pray for their children. Job's offering sacrifices for them. And the wicked cometh in his day. The, the, the wicked are going to take the place. Where? Hell. Hell's a troubling place. The righteous won't go to hell. The wicked will. A hypocrite. Ooh. With his mouth. Boy, Solomon's got a lot to say about the mouth. As does James. The hypocrite, that's a guy who says one thing and does something else. He's two-faced. Destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Now watch. Hypocrite. What is opposite of hypocrite? You say judge. Correct. Just. A hypocrite is not just. You see something else a hypocrite has? He has no knowledge. A man that's two-faced, that says one thing and does another, or does something and doesn't does something else, has no knowledge, and he's not just, and he will not be delivered. The just shall be delivered from slander and gossip. Usually a hypocrite will accuse others of what he is guilty of. I don't know where I learned that note, but that's written in my Bible. Hypocrites will accuse others what is what he is guilty of. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. You know, I can tell you that verse is so anti-American today. Now, verse 10 is a general truth. Not in the streets of England. Not in the streets of America. I'm righteous by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. And when I'm preaching the gospel, people are angry. And when I've been shut up by the law, the people rejoice. And when the when the wicked perish, when the wicked die, there is shouting. When the wicked die in America today, the funerals and everything is put on TV. It's put on the front pages of the newspaper. I just read about today in my Facebook, a dear friend many years on Facebook, a Christian, has gone home to be with the Lord. His wife had to make the post on his post that he died going home with the Lord. I didn't read about it in the papers. The media didn't broadcast, here's a Christian that loved the Lord going home to glory. It's a general truth, verse 10, but we're, we're in a day where evil is good and good is evil. By the blessings of the upright, the city is exalted. Again, another general truth. But it, the city, overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. The blessings of the upright, the city exalted. Do you know how many churches are still closed? That there is no Bible preaching in many churches? And yet in some places you can go and get alcohol. You can sit on a bar stool and get your butt drunk.
It is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. The city. And for the sake this is shut up, I'm not going to say anything further about that verse. I'll say one thing, though. It just came to mind. You know how many cities were destroyed by the mouth of Adolf Hitler? He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. The man of understanding knows when to shut up. And when somebody despises their neighbor, over there in the next pew, the next house over, everybody's your neighbor. And if you despise a neighbor, and would, would Solomon write in the book of Proverbs, would be a Jew to another Jew, a Christian to another Christian, you lack wisdom. It's a forgive and forget. And when you hold a grudge, there's no wisdom. A tale bearer, tale bearer, newspaper in the media, reveal his secret. But he that is faithful spirit concealeth a matter. I'm a Christian and I work for the media. I work for the news. Then you're in violation of verse 13. There are things that the news reports, secrets that the news will report that a faithful spirit will say, nope, none of your business. A lot of times when I'm praying for somebody in church and I want to know, I'll go up to the pastor of that church and then he, I say, I don't want to know the circumstance. I just want, is this person, are they doing well or they're not doing? I don't want to know what's going on. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking is I'm praying for them. Are my prayers, they're doing well or my prayers, they're not doing so well. I had one pastor one time, I asked, and he told me all the juicy details, like, I didn't need to know that. It's not what I was asking. And when you got somebody that comes up to you, guess what? The famous words, guess what? Other famous words, did you hear what I hear? At that moment, you need to do about face and walk away. Don't give your ear. My, my first wife, Lisa, she was in the nursery and it upset her. And she went to the nursery director and said, I don't want to work with those people unless I really have to. And went, Why? Because they gossip, they tell tales, they're, 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 they're false reporters, false witnesses. I don't want to have anything to do with them unless I have to. My wife told me she did as the amen, glory to God. I'll stand with you 100%. And she took a fall by the church because there were people rectable. Now, I don't mean rectable, I meant rectable. You know what I said. Where no counsel is, 66 books and 40 authors, the people fall. Where there's no man with the gospel today of Jesus Christ. We've already read the wicked will fall. Verse 5. We are counselors to the wicked to show them how to get right. How to get right with God. How do I get right with God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll show you where it says it. 
And when you get involved with things in life, it is good advice to go to somebody who knows what they're saying and know what they're doing. Don't do what Rehoboam did. He went to his high school buddies and said, what should I do? That's what Rehoboam did. And he split the entire nation into two that still has not gotten back together and will not get back together to maybe the tribulation, but absolutely when Jesus comes. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now, this is not a yay or nay verse. This is one general verse. Counsel is good when you get it from a good person. He does surety for a stranger so smart for it. And he that hateth surety ship is sure. All right. This verse is one general verse, but it actually has two causes. It talks about co-signing for a law, for a loan. He that is surety is an opposite. He that hate surety shit. Okay, well, that doesn't help me out. He that is surety for a stranger is what's smart for it. You co-sign a loan for your friend. And your friend or whoever you co-sign for does not pay the loan. It's your responsibility. You smart for it. That's what it means. Don't come crying. Well, I signed a loan. He didn't do it. I got it. Well, the Bible says. <laughs> he that hated surety ship is sure. I'll tell you what that means. I don't care who you are. Don't you ever come to me and ask me to sign a loan. I've done it. You can sign a loan? Nope. People come to me and ask me. I've said, nope. Will not do it. He that hated sure. I'm not, not, I'm not signing no, not doing no loan. Now, I got a loan for my car. But I'm not going to sign a loan for somebody else. Never. Because if you do and they don't pay for it for whatever reason. Now I'm obligated. I got one Christian friend all upset with me. And I ain't doing it. Don't you do it. If there's one word of advice I get from the from the. People's Court and Judge Judy. Yes, I watched him. I watched him to learn legal things. That's my legal counsel. Don't sign for a whole signed loan. Now, if I can give you money and help you out, I'll give you money. I ain't going to sign nothing. A gracious woman. Oh, a gracious woman. We dealt with a strange woman, dealt with a, a gracious woman, retaineth honor. Grace is when you don't deserve it. A gracious woman who does things for people who don't deserve it, she's honored. A strong man Retain his riches. What does that verse have to do with anything? Verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Ain't going to do you no good. You can get a complete security marine uh, Navy SEAL team protect your, your riches. And when the heavens and earth flee from, from the face of the one on the great white throne judgment, all your riches are gone. Kaboom. And we're going to stop right there. We'll pick up the rest of the verse, verse 17, Lord willing, tomorrow night. But again, as I said last time, when Solomon writes a yea and a nay, 
or nay and a yea. Look at that verse and say, where do I stand? Do I stand on the side of God? Or do I stand on the side of the devil? And if I stand on the side of the devil, I need to repent and get right. And if I stand on the side of God, I need to do better. That's what Proverbs can do for you. Now, the way I'm studying my Bible right now, I've done it. When I'm done studying and reading my Bible like I am right now, I'll, I'll, Lord willing, I'll do it. It is advisable. Today is the 17th. It's advisable for you not only to read your Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there's all kinds of great Bible outlines, Bible charts, Bible readings. There's no, no good, there's no wrong Bible chart if you read Genesis or Revelation. I read it, I read more uh, Old Testament, and I read the New Testament. I end up reading more New Testament. Oh, I read, that's great. I just read from Genesis to Revelation. That's great. You're reading. But read a chapter of Proverbs every day. Why? Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. This is why you read a proverb every day and we're we done. To know wisdom, instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtility to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsel. And understand a proverb and interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Read your Bible all the way through. Get yourself a Bible chart and do it. Read a proverb every day. Today is the 17th. Proverbs 17. And then when you get to the 30th, and there's no 31, well, you got two Proverbs to read that month. Is that really so hard? When you come to February, you got two last chapters to read. Is that so hard? What? Maybe one television sitcom you, you, you don't have to watch? Shouldn't be watching any television. 